If you love Kent, then you'll love this. When we're making our quiz trails, we discover so many amazing stories about different aspects of Kent and beyond. Here's a lovely story from Royal Tunbridge Wells. Queen Victoria was a regular visitor to Tunbridge Wells, as it was called then. Following her death, her son Edward VII, whom she called Bertie, succeeded to the throne and bestowed the title of Royal on Tunbridge Wells in 1909. In honour of his mother having been a patron of the town spa and to celebrate the popularity of the town with the royals over the years. Benjamin Disraeli, writer and politician, became Prime Minister of England in 1868. He married on the 28th of August 1839 and spent his honeymoon in Tunbridge Wells at the Royal Kentish Hotel, London Road. His bride, Anne Marie, was 12 years his senior had been recently widowed and wealthy. Due to inheriting her husband's vast fortune, Benjamin was up to his ears in debt, facing ruin and unkind friends, claimed he was a fortune hunter. At that time, the debtor's prison was the usual result for financial mismanagement, but Disraeli was saved from this fate, as at that time, members of parliament were immune from arrest. Mary Ann was the daughter of a sailor, and while she had wealth from her first marriage, she lacked social standing and struggled to some extent with the social demands of Victorian society. However, she was quite an outspoken character at times. It was certainly a lively, passionate love match by all accounts. Lots of shouting rows mixed in with lots of fun and laughter. Mary Ann is said to have told Queen Victoria that she always slept with her arms around Israeli's neck. He wrote of her that she was the perfect wife. In 1868, Benjamin persuaded the Queen to give Mary Ann a peerage in her own right. And so when the sailor's daughter died four years later, she was with the title of Viscountess Beaconsfield.